police maintaining strong presence in Doheny Park following shooting of four persons, including policemen, yesterday. Senate approves bill aimed at preventing entities from engaging in money laundering. Strong cold front to move across the country later today. The St. Andrew South Police are maintaining a strong presence in the Doheny Park community. This after four persons were shot and wounded along Lowell Avenue at about 1 p.m. yesterday. The three men and one woman were reportedly pounced upon by gunmen. Head of the division, Superintendent Kirk Ricketts, told IRFM News that a policeman is among the wounded persons. He said that the police are looking at how security efforts can be bolstered. That's an area that we, we, we have uh, a round the clock police presence. And as such, um, you know, we're, we're looking at the incident that occurred yesterday and looking to see where we can tweak to, to improve security for the uh, community members there. Head of the St. Andrews South Police Division, Superintendent Kirk Ricketts. That's Senior Superintendent Kirk Ricketts. The Police Federation is expected to continue wage talks with the Finance Ministry next Monday, January 31, at 8 a.m. A marathon meeting was held with ministry officials, including Portfolio Minister Dr. Nigel Clark, yesterday. The Federation said during yesterday's meeting, it clearly communicated its position and that of the membership. It said a position deemed to be reasonable was placed on the negotiating table and that Dr. Clark was asked to examine the proposed figures in a a bid to arrive at a long-awaited resolution to the wage dispute. The Federation pointed out that any acceptance is by consensus of membership only. The Senate has approved a new bill that's aimed at preventing entities from engaging in money laundering and the financing of terrorism. The Terrorism Prevention Designated Reporting Entity Trust and Corporate Services Providers Resolution 2022 will seek to strengthen Jamaica's financial and related non-financial systems, making them more robust and transparent. Leader of Government Business, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, who piloted the bill, explained that the international National community has placed greater emphasis on the fight against the money laundering and financing of terrorism. Money laundering, as we know, is essentially the process of hiding the illegal origin of funds. And terrorist, terrorist financing is, is, is fundamentally the gathering or the provision of funds for terrorist purposes. And the, the problem cuts across borders. Criminals exploit loopholes in domestic systems to try to move their funds through or to jurisdictions with weak or ineffective legal and institutional frameworks. So strengthening our frameworks to protect and prevent these activities therefore plays the dual process or dual purpose of protecting us nationally and ensuring that we play our part in the global fight against this, these scourges. She added that the goals of the anti-money laundering and counter-financing of terrorism frameworks are to protect the integrity of entities and make it difficult for those engaged in crime to profit from criminal activities. Noting that Jamaica's compliance will maintain the trust of international entities, Senator Johnson-Smith said citizens will also benefit. As we in this chamber well know, Jamaica's compliance is important not only to businesses and to business communities, but to a wide cross-section of users at every level of banking services. Uh, compliance creates trust, Mr. President, and trust in our system seeks to ensure matters as simple as if you obtain a credit card in Jamaica, that you are reasonably, uh, it is reasonably likely that it will be accepted by international businesses, that it will be accepted by different websites if you're seeking to do online shopping. And um, they're more likely to accept it than to reject it. It ensures that if you're sending a money order, or the number of countries from which or to which you can send a money order is as broad as possible. These are, uh, are certain ordinary levels or rather individual levels at which one can experience trust or mistrust of a financial system. So strengthening our AML CFT frameworks is work that benefits all of us. 
leader of government business, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has indicated that the primary health care renewal model initiative will result in more health centers being transformed into smart health care facilities. Smart health care facilities are intended to provide climate smart, greener and safer health care. Dr. Tufton noted that the project involves a review of existing in infrastructure. We will be launching our primary health care renewal model that will see a number of health centers to a large extent looking like what the smart health care facilities are offering. In that we are going to be reviewing our infrastructure buildings. Some of them are already under review. You would have heard of the IDB program where 10 health centers are going to be overhauled or newly constructed. The features around resilience are going to be emphasized, whether it is the provision of water, or it is other features that will ensure that it withstands the, the risks that we are all exposed to in these environments. He added that under the project, healthcare workers will be trained. Dr. Tufton said 127 health centers will benefit in the first phase of the project. The people are going to be trained. In this instance, we're going to be adding more doctors and nurses as part of that model to focus greater attention at the primary level and not just to do prevention, but also to do some curative services to prevent the crowding in of our hospital system, which people tends, tend to do when they don't have the support at the community level. And that primary health care model will start in the first phase with looking at 127 health centers across Jamaica. We have about 300. And 25, so we'll take it in phases. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton. He was speaking at Thursday's handing over ceremony for nine smart health care facilities at the St. Anne's Bay Health Center in St. Anne. One man has been hospitalized after the vehicle he was driving plunged over a precipice along the Spur Tree Hill main road in Manchester yesterday. Police reports said that about 4.30 p.m., the driver of a truck lost control of the vehicle while going downhill. The driver reportedly jumped from the vehicle before it plunged over the precipice. The accident follows Wednesday's two-vehicle crash along the main road, which left three people hospitalized. The Met Office says a strong cold front is expected to move across Jamaica later today. It is expected to stall east of the island tomorrow and linger through to Tuesday. As a result, there will be showers and isolated thunderstorms, mainly across northern and southeastern parishes. Additionally, cooler than normal temperatures and periods of gusty winds are expected across the island. Fishers and other marine interests, especially those on the north coast, should exercise caution as sea conditions are expected to deteriorate. In news overseas, the winter storm hitting the northeastern United States is officially a bomb cyclone. The National Weather Service made the revelation today. Bomb cyclone is a term given to, rapid, to a rapidly strengthening storm. More in the support from the BBC. A fierce storm mixing heavy snow with powerful winds is sweeping the east coast of the United States. Tens of millions of people are in the path of the storm. They've been urged to stay at home and hunker down. 